morning. <laughs> We're back at Grantham. As you can see, the floor and jaws are on. The scaffold has gone up as well, so we're going to spend the morning loading out the floor so we don't brick ourselves out of uh, loading it out. The only problem is, you're not scaffolders alike. What's all that about, eh? So we're going to have to tweak the scaffold. They've gone a bit, bit too high with it as well, so. But solutions, not problems. Right, let's crack on. Little thing I want to show you guys, because everyone was questioning me about it. And this, this here, it's um, it's my continuous cavity. Okay. So the inspector said that he wanted a continuous cavity all the way up. So it acts as a vertical damp, and there isn't a cold spot in the extension. So a lot of people said, why aren't you toothing in? And why are you putting a continuous cavity in? Because that's what I was told to do. So I'm not gonna argue with an inspector. So yeah, every inspector's different, and this one wanted this. So yeah, I thought I'd clear that up. Right, it's just gone quarter to one, and we're finally about to lay. People don't understand how long it takes to set up an extension when you get the scaffold first lifted. Like, you know, cutting all your trees and dams and anything. Anyway, we're setting this cavity tray on top of our lintel, right, Drew? Mm -hmm. Okay, a couple of things we want to know about it, or you need to know about it. The cavity tray is about one or two mil back from the face of your brick, okay? Okay. If you notice that it's just slightly overlapping my lintel. You see, only by like a mil, not even that half a mil, but it's just slightly overlapping my lintel. It's just slightly more forward, yeah? Right. Okay, that's good practice. So if any water hits, it will hit this and go away. It won't like just get caught and stuck on the lintel. Okay, that's one thing. So how is it, why is it a couple of mil back uh, on the edge of the brick? Because if it was forward, when I put my bed joint on, you would see the tray just hanging out. So it's just ugly. Okay, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Does that make sense? sense? Then the next thing we do, is you send it past your opening, your door jam, mm -hmm. okay? A few hundred mil, and this is because, this is what you're meant to do, okay? This tray goes up onto that brick, like that, and right. it's in. Okay. Okay, that is because if any moisture comes down, it will hit the tray, and then it will hit this, and then come out of the weep holes. 100% of the time, you're meant to bed your tray on. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I okay, don't so. often do it. But yeah, it, go, it bonds basically. Um, oh my god, this trowel's way too big for this. I'll get you the one. No, I'll be all right. I'll persevere. It basically bonds your tray to your block work, yeah? Mm -hmm. Hey, that's actually stuck. Always it bond, not... <laughs> always compo your tray on, because that actually works. What's that? <laughs> Bit of compo on there. We've got our weep hole in, that's normal, just like we did downstairs, yeah? Yep. Okay, so now that's built in, yeah? The weep hole's built in, you see that? Yeah. And then we just build over this little bit of tray here, like that, and then that's just secure. So any water that comes down here, hits this and goes in and out, and then we'll have some more weep holes along this, okay? okay. So that's basically how you set up a tray properly uh, over lintels. Like you've got your upstand, you've got plenty of bearing with it, and you see, this is what I mean, it's only like a millimetre back from the brick, but my pointer will just about hide that, which is cool. Yeah. Sand, nice one, buddy. Yeah. Any questions? No, no, I'm pretty happy with that. Cool. Three o'clock, isn't it? Three o'clock now. Mm -hmm. And what have we done? We loaded that. I cut my vertical damp. We did this nosebleed. Did a bit of beam fill. We can't do the rest of the beam fill until tomorrow. It's been one of them days, hasn't it? Morning. <laughs> so this morning I've trimmed this timber back and now I'm just getting all the beam fill in. In a little while, once I've done this, Drew's gonna flush this up. I'm gonna set a profile just here so I can pull in this whole gable end. I also need to do some beam fill down there where a little flat roof's going. And I'm also gonna tackle the back because I've got some soldiers to do which I never got never got done yesterday. But yeah, 
it's what, quarter to nine, and we're actually laying. Because yesterday it was like one o'clock by the time I picked up a trowel. So hopefully we've got a good day. Sand. So I've just put those soldiers on, right? Mm -hmm. And what a lot of people do nowadays is they whack a profile from that pillar to that pillar, and then you can just literally build it straight with a profile. However, I've done it old school with a couple of lines. Of course, these are like my guide, yeah? Yeah, yeah. But once you've built it, it's good just to check to see how it ranges in. So here, I've got like a little gap, so I can just give it like a little wiggle. Just a little wiggle over there. And then you check the bottom as well. See what that's looking like. So you see like, come here. You see how that one there is the touching at the bottom? Yeah. Okay, where it's, it's touching at the line at the top. So you just tweak it out slightly and make sure it's all perfect. Otherwise, if you don't do this, right, and you build straight on them and they're all like a bit over the shop, you'll have a massive belly in your brickwork above. Right. So yeah, just quite a good practice to make sure that everything ranges through quite nicely. And they do, which is quite surprising. Sad. <laughs> Drew. <laughs> Do you like being my cameraman? It's all right, isn't it? It's pretty safe. It's all right. It's, it's pretty, pretty safe. It's better than most apprenticeships. my gauge what's on the house to the profile here can you see that okay. mm -hmm. see these little marks yeah right yeah. so that's gauge with the house because the house is slightly out don't quite work gauge and i'm just running a dory block these are from rhino build these are sand um just pinning in there and wrapping it all the way follow me and i've also set a profile here and I've transferred the level of the house to this profile because this part of the house here, that's 30 mil out a gauge. So I've transferred that level to here and I'm running my corner to this. So when I build this work here, mm -hmm. um, it will be like all level across or at least it will marry through. So I'm gonna leave this profile on until I actually build that, but it's all marked up anyway. But yeah, sad. Big push today. Drew's running around like a headless chicken, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. We're getting there though. <laughs> yeah, we're getting right. there. Sad, right, go on then.
Mate, you can see how much you've cooked on this as well. Oh, can you? You can, buddy. Come <laughs> on, we're like a little lobster. Yeah, man. Oh, no. I thought the skin would be used to it. Mediterranean skin. <laughs> Obviously not. Island boy. <laughs> 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 oh. Island boy. <laughs> What about this side? Have I cooked it that side? Mate, you've honestly proper like tanned. Proper tanned. tanned. So we are just setting out this window here, right? Which is gonna go there, right? And not, it's not an issue, but the thing I'm dealing with is I have one measurement for the window reveal, okay? Which is 660 mil. Okay. Okay, so follow me. That's the only measurement I've got to work with. Oh. On, right, that's it. So they've not given me the window opening and they've not given me that pillar either. But what I can see from the drawing is that this pillar here, which is 660, right, which is three bricks, one, two, three. So that's where my reveal is, there. What I can see from the drawing is that that pillar there mm -hmm. is slightly smaller. Even though they've not given me a measurement, it looks smaller. So I'm gonna make that a two brick pillar, this a three brick pillar, and that should give me a nice window of uh, 1660. So have they not told you the dimensions of the window? No. Not even Just, the materials like included in no, that? No, no, no. Oh. Like the thing is on, it, on extensions like this, it's kind of up to interpretation. Okay. okay? Um, another thing, what I've not got is a height. Normally like a standard window in like anywhere really, it's 900 from floor level. And if I measure down, it's normally 900, okay? Right, okay. But, again, I want to match the existing house. You see, if the existing house, I want my windowsill to be the same level as that. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So, I'm going to whack the window here, and I'm pretty confident it'll be all right. Sad. Yeah, sad. That's the thing with extensions, it's just like, make it up as you go along. But it's good. Yeah. It'll be all right. Sad. The three brick pillar, okay? Something you really need to pay attention to when you're doing like little pillars like this is having like even joints. Right, okay. So you've got your distance to work with, which is 660 mil. Mm. You don't want like a razor perk. You don't want a dead tight perk there and then a massive one, let's say, over there. Okay, so you even your joints out. Because there's nothing worse than when you look at a pillar and you've got like couple of big joints or something and then right on the end you've got like a dead small one right okay so it's good practice to lay that one because it's so small you lay that one you lay that one and then you put the, the final one in the middle what's going on with this side there we go you put the final one in the middle and then you just make sure that your perps are pretty even yeah this is something my old boss dad if you're watching um used to pull me on all the time so I used to have like dead tight joints all the way and I have like a massive whammer slumber right at the end. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. Also, another thing, yeah. um, you know, it's good, obviously, you always want your jar to plumb, yeah? Yeah. So you see how that's pretty plumb. But it's also quite handy, right, if you slightly lean it in. Because, oh, right, if it starts leaning out like that, okay, you'll never get your window in and it's really hard to bring your brick brickwork back to plumb. Whereas if it's just slightly leaning in, even just like by a mil in a couple of foot, it's just so much easier to keep plumb, okay? Okay. So that's like, it's, obviously you want your jarms to be plumb, right? But that's just like a handy trick to always make sure they will be plumb. If it starts going one way, it's impossible to whack it back. Whereas if it's leaning too much that way, it's easy to bring it back into plumb, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Try and keep them plumb though. <laughs> Sad. Sad. Oh. <laughs> right, so 
Come here, Drew. Come here, Drew. So we've got a steel there, yeah? Yeah. And the inspector wanted us to put a tray over the steel like that. So we're going to pretty much bed this tray on there. Mm -hmm. And that is because if we weren't to put this tray on, And there's the existing building. Right, there's the existing building. If we weren't to put this tray on, if any moisture come down the building, it would just go into the old house. Whereas now, now we've put this tray on here, any moisture that comes down and hits the existing building or this cavity, it will come straight out of this tray. Okay. Um, we do it also, there's a couple of steels here as well, okay? Yeah. So, not now, but when I get to about this height here, I'll whack another tray on uh, and it'll come out just above that lead, the wee poles will, okay? Yeah. Again, if I didn't put the tray on up here, any moisture that came down the cavity, it would literally just go straight down and into the ass. Yeah? No fake wheat pellets. No fake wheat pellets. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a certain amount of wheat vents you're supposed to put along the uh, board? Is it, is it once every three bricks? Once every two. Two. That's it. Nice one because you just reminded me to put my wheat vent in. Oh. I was just about to start <laughs> saying. <laughs> it's a good job you asked that. I just, I don't know, just. Uh, I don't yeah, know every, every, every two bricks uh, you're going to put them in. Or well, that's what you do on site, NHBC standards. Yeah. Sam, so we are pretty much done for Friday. We're just holding up. It's about, what do you say, 20 past three? I think so, yeah. Yes, yeah, three past three. It's a long drive home. So, we've got our tray on, which is sand. Monday, we're gonna beam fill all of that and rack a big corner back here and do a load of starter packs up against the original house, as you can see. Today, really, we're just focused on a massive corner here and setting out this back window. So, Monday as well, we'll probably get a bit higher, right up to about that height, so we're ready for scaffold around here. And the reason I did a massive rack back is because it's only me and Drew, I couldn't be bothered to spread Drew dead thin by loading out an entire gable, especially with these bricks because they eat up compo. So big corner, and then I'm able to stay in one spot and only use one or two spots, it just saves loads of time. But yeah, sand, that is, that is it, video done. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, follow me on Instagram because I upload daily there. Sad. Catch you in the next one.